The next level above secondary structure is called tertiary structure, which describes the conformation of the entire polypeptide. So secondary structure is just stabilized uh, primarily by hydrogen bonds between atoms that form peptide bonds of the backbone, tertiary structure. Um, and tertiary structure is stabilized by an array of non-covalent bonds between diverse side chains of the proteins. And it's largely limited to a small number of conformations, but tertiary structure is virtually unlimited. So a few of these, so if we draw this coming over here to our tertiary structure here, you might see something. We'll just do a line like this to show the different types of bonds that you can have. So right here you might have something like a van der Waals force holding these proteins together, some carbons holding them different van der Waals forces, and then you might have some sort of molecule here bonded to a hydrogen, so hydrogen bonding, and then you might have something like a, an ionic bond down here holding this together. So this is kind of the folding of the entire structure. So right here you have the alpha helix and the beta sheet, which is just a, a small localized structure. So if we had the, the primary structure right here, and pretend this is like 100 amino acids here, that might correspond to this. Whereas this little area right here might correspond to a beta sheet, right? So along all this, this whole uh, long chain of amino acids, you might have a beta sheet followed by an alpha helix, followed by two more beta sheets, followed by three alpha helices, and all these different structures. And then the tertiary structure is what kind of holds all of these together. So the way we determine tertiary structure is usually by uh, either NMR spectra or... Uh, the more common one is x-ray crystallography, where you just shoot um, uh, x-rays and you determine the diffraction pattern with a computer program. So I'm going to draw just kind of a basic uh, protein structure, what they might commonly look like in a tertiary structure that you would find from, from a, from a uh, x-ray crystallography. So if we draw this here, you might have something like a bunch of alpha helices come in like this. And then in pink, you have a couple of beta pleated sheets right here coming through. And these are all connected. And then you have more proteins here with little residues coming off. And some more beta sheets here. And protein structures can get pretty complicated. And you know, oftentimes, you, if it was an integral membrane protein, you might have a, a binding site up here or some sort of conformation like this where some molecule or other protein can interact. Or you might have a pore where, where some sort of molecule or protein or something might travel through it, like a sodium channel or a potassium channel or something like that. So the tertiary structure is the entire structure of the, the protein. And next we have the quaternary structure, which quaternary structure is just multiple tertiary structures, so multiple different proteins coming together to form one big protein. Um, so an example of that, a common example, would be the uh, structure of hemoglobin or the structure of pyruvate dehydrogenase. So this one is huge, and it looks... I'm going to do a little, little drawing here. So this is way zoomed out here, so you have a protein here and here and this goes on for an entire circle so these are all individual proteins here here and they're forming this circle so these are fairly large proteins as well and they all kind of interact and then we move a little bit deeper in here you have more proteins here that might have beta pleated sheets and alpha helices and then in the middle let's say we have these these more green ones in here and this whole structure comes together and is formed from all of these different amino or these different proteins which have their own individual tertiary structures and they work they work together in unison as as this large pyruvate dehydrogenase so each one of these these different proteins might have a different function like this one might bind to some sort of molecule and interact with it and then tell this protein where to go or this this one right here might have some sort of degrading property that it eats up, um, kind of like a proteasome property where it can digest or, or break down um, 
some molecule like an enzyme or something like that. And each one of these, these different proteins in this large pyruvate dehydrogenase might have a different role. They might have similar roles, but they all work together like this small or very large on a molecular scale, but this small molecular machine 